Hello, my previous presentation was on lower extremity arterial anatomy and our current video today is on arterial leg diseases. Again, my name is Dari Nawaka, author of Vascular Technology Made Simple. I do have a free webinar scheduled for January 16th at 6 p.m. You can register using that link right below. Um, registering for the web webinar, again, provides you unlimited access to the videos and also a free CME. And you can also purchase my book on Amazon using the link below. The webinars are extracts from the book. Purchasing the book provides you a better understanding of the lectures and you're able to take notes also as we go along in these videos. That is a copy of the book. Um, again, it's available on Amazon. When performing lower extremity arterial disease, you want to um, obtain questions, get questions from the patient. You want to feel for pulses. Um, when performing a lower extremity arterial duplex or testing, you must obtain a complete history from the patient. A complete history provides clinical symptoms and indication for the testing. Examine the legs for any scars, previous incisions, surgeries, um, try to feel for the posterior tibial artery and the dorsalis pedis pulses. Um, that gives you a, a general idea of what's going on in the leg. Signs and symptoms, claudication, pain when walking that subsides with rest, occurs due to lack of blood supply to the muscle when in motion. The level of anatomic claudication determines the location of stenosis or blockage. For example, pain in the buttocks, indicate aortoiliac disease, pain in the thigh suggests external iliac or common femoral artery disease, and calf pain suggests femoral or popliteal artery disease. Again, you can never ask too many questions um, with your patients. And sometimes, you know, when you ask questions, just asking questions give you a general idea of what's going on. Just asking questions actually gives you an idea, is it an arterial disease? Does it sound muscular? Does it, does it sound uh, neurological? So again, basic questions are very critical when um, obtaining, um, when doing arterial study. Ischemic rest pain occurs when limb is in a non-dependent position. Patients typically complain of pain in the toes and foot when sleeping. Pain is relieved by dangling of foot, also known as foot dependency. You have tissue loss. This is the most severe of the above symptoms and is represented by gangrene. Non-healing ulcer produced by necrosis of tissue due to severely dampened to no blood flow to the limb. In the case of an acute arterial occlusion, which is a sudden loss of arterial supply due to thrombus, embolism or trauma, emergent treatment is necessary. And below are the five Ps to watch out for. You have the pallor, paralysis, polar, parathesia, and pulselessness. Pulselessness, pulses can be felt in the aorta, femoral, popliteal, dorsalis pedis, and posterior tibial artery. The peroneal artery is not felt due to its location. And below I have the grading criteria for pulses from weak to bounding pulses. All the signs and symptoms include trophic changes, hair loss, and thickened toenails, decreased capillary refill greater than three seconds, dependent rubber flow to the limb in a dependent position is slow with an increased red discoloration, rest pain, this pain occurs in the foot, toes, and heels when patient is laying down or sleeping, white dusky limb color, okay? Cyanosis, bluish limb, temperature, skin should always be warm. A cool, a cool skin could be indicative of decreased circulation. Limb ulcer, painful wounds located in the tibial aspect of the limb. Gangrene, dead tissue due to lack of blood supply. <clears throat> Arterial disease and risk factors, diabetes. This mostly affects the distal popliteal and distal vessels. Increased chances of medial calcification, non-compressible ABIs, diabetic neuropathy, decreased or no sensation, increased chances of limb loss, hypertension, high blood pressure, major risk factors, hyperlipidemia, elevated lipids in the blood, smoking, family history, age, 
gender, mostly men. The most common arterial pathology is atherosclerosis, also known as atherosclerosis obliterans, commonly occurs in the intima and media layer. Common locations of atherosclerotic disease, you have the common femoral bifurcation, carotid bifurcation, origins of the origin of the brachiocephalic vessel, origin of the visceral vessel, infrarenal aortic iliac system, superficial femoral adiaductus canal, and popliteal trifurcation. Understanding arterial disease, um, Lerici syndrome is an aorto iliac occlusive disease that occurs in the abdominal aorta as it bifurcates into the common iliac artery. It occurs in males and symptoms include you have pain in hips, thighs, or calves when exercising or walking, impotence, erectile dysfunction, coldness, or pallor of lower limbs, weak pulse in the femoral artery, and if left untreated can lead to numbness, sores, and weakness to legs and Embolism occurs mostly when plaque breaks off from one point, travels and lodges in another location or small vessels. Some of the pathologies seen with these in the lower extremity is the blue toe syndrome. And you have aneurysm. A true aneurysm is the deletion of all three arterial wall layers, mostly occurs in the infrarenal segment of the abdominal aorta. Aneurysm also occurs in thoracic aorta, femoral, popliteal and renal arteries. Main complications includes rupture and distal embolization to peripheral arteries. Risk factors of aneurysm, smoking, congenital defects, infection, atherosclerosis, trauma, iatrogenic injury, and sometimes unknown. Again, types of aneurysm, we have the fusiform, unknown, your uniform shape with symmetrical deletion of the entire aortic wall. You have the circular, located, localized outpatching of the aortic wall and is shaped like a pseudo aneurysm. And to the right there, I have images of a circular aneurysm. In the circular aneurysm, you can see just the outpatching of the aortic wall. And then here you see it's symmetrical, deletion of both sides, okay? Pseudoaneurysm, known as false aneurysm, is a pulsating hematoma. It's caused by a hole in the arterial wall. There's communication between the main artery and adjacent tissues. Usually occurs after insertion of a catheter during angiography, endovascular procedure, or dialysis. Two full signal is visualized in the aneurysmal neck. So you can see here, you have on the top image, you have your main artery and you can see the hole in the wall and the blood flowing into the tissues. And this is a waveform obtained right at the neck of the pseudoaneurysm. There are also vascular lesions seen in people with non-atherosclerotic disease. This includes dissection. And here I put um, a note saying no flow characteristics um, because this is on the board exams. Arteritis coarctation of the aorta, visospastic disorders, primary and secondary Raynaud's, and entrapment syndrome. In my next um, video, I will be talking about signals um, that you would see um, in dissection. So when a vessel has a dissection, you would know the flow characteristics um, usually seen in these vessels and that would be in one of my uh, videos that would be posted in the future dissection this occurs due to tear of the intima which allows blood to flow blood to form a cavity you're going to have a false lumen between two layers and to the right you have a transverse image of the aorta with dissection and then you have in the b image you have the sagittal image of an aorta with a known dissection. Dissection causes blood to flow through the false and original lumen. This mostly affects the thoracic aorta. It can also be seen in the abdominal aorta and peripheral. Arteritis inflammation of the arterial walls. It affects the tibial and peroneal arteries. 
as well as smaller and distal arterioles and nutrient vessels. Bugis disease is an example of arteritis known as thromboagitis obliterans. It affects mostly men, young smokers between the age of 20 to 40 years old. Symptoms of Bugis disease include numbness and tingling of the limbs, rest pain, skin ulceration, and gangrene. Here you have an image here of Bugis disease. And you can um, look at those toes and see the discoloration in the toes. Um, coarctation of the aorta. This occurs due to narrowing of the thoracic or sometimes the abdominal aorta. It is a congenital uh, condition ranging from mild to severe and sometimes not diagnosed till adulthood. Signs and symptoms include high blood pressure, leg cramps or cold feet, decreased pulses and abnormal ABIs, chest pain. Now, Raynaud's disease, you have the vasospasmic disorders. is vasospasm or constriction of the arteries or smaller vessels related to cold exposure and sometimes stress. Raynaud's is an example of such in which patients appear with bluish fingers, also known as cyanosis, pallor, and rubor. You have types of Raynaud's. You have the primary Raynaud's, common in younger women with no history of an underlying medical condition, and it is triggered by cold. Note that I did highlight um, that primary Raynaud's is found in women with no history, so they have no underlying medical condition. However, the secondary Raynaud's or Raynaud's phenomena or Raynaud's syndrome is diagnosed in individuals with underlying medical condition, less common and is a more serious condition. Individuals with this type of Raynaud's always have ischemia. Unlike the primary Raynaud's, patients are symptomatic only when exposed to cold. So again, you want to know for those who are getting ready for the board exams, you want to be able to uh, differentiate your primary and your secondary Raynaud's. Some of the associated causes of secondary Raynaud's are diseases of the arteries, atherosclerosis or Bugis syndrome, inflamed blood vessels. Diseases of the connective tissue are causing most people with scleroderma, lupus, Strogan syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis and autoimmune diseases. Entrapment syndrome, one of which is the popliteal entrapment syndrome. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a rare vascular disease that occurs in young athletes caused by the compression of the popliteal artery due to enlargement of the muscle over time from exercise and training. This compression will eventually restrict blood flow to the lower legs. Sometimes patients with popliteal entrapment syndrome might be born with a developmental defect where the medial head of the gastrocnemius compresses the popliteal artery. And this occurs in less than 3% born with this defect. Symptoms of popliteal entrapment syndrome, pain in the same area during exercise, also known as claudication. Thanks again for your time. This session is one of many series of topics to be covered in the Vascular Technology Made Simple Review book. You can pick up a copy of the book using the link that was provided earlier. For further questions or feedbacks, you can email me at divinescanning at gmail.com or visit my website at www.divinescanning.com. You can also reach me on Facebook on Divine Scanning. Thank you and I hope this video was very useful for you and again, thank you.